Welcome to another segment of Remedies for the Remnant. Another quick glimpse at the wonder of God's healing ways that He offers His sincere followers through the Word and the Spirit of Prophecy. I'd like to share some very important counsel focused towards those of us who are laboring fervently for our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. By the way, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18 and 19, every one of us who's accepted Jesus Christ should be earnest laborers for the Master, regardless of whether we're in the home or on the job or in the church or on the street. God has given us a beautiful call to communicate the love of Christ and the, the wonderful truths of His Word to the lost and dying. I'm reading, though, from a book. It's called Christian Service. Have you ever heard of it? Listen to what page 249 says. The disciples of Jesus needed to be educated as to how they should labor and how they should rest. Today there is a need that God's chosen workmen should listen to the command of Christ to go apart and rest a while. Many valuable lives have been sacrificed that need not have been through ignorance of this command. Though the harvest is great and the laborers are few, nothing is gained by sacrificing, sacrificing health and life. There are many feeble, worn workmen who feel deeply distressed when they see how much there is to be done and how little they can do. How they long for physical strength to accomplish more. But it is to this class that Jesus says, Come ye apart yourselves with a, into a desert place and rest a while. The Christian life is not made up of unceasing activity or of continual meditation. Christians must work earnestly for the salvation of the lost, and they must also take time for contemplation, for prayer, and the study of the Word of God. It will not do to be always under the strain of the work and excitement. For in this way, personal piety is neglected and the powers of the mind and body are injured. Wow. Ministry of Healing, page 58. Listen to this one. All who are under the training of God need the quiet hour of communion with their own hearts, with nature, and with God. In them is to be revealed a life that is not in harmony with the world, its customs or practices. And they need to have a personal experience in obtaining a knowledge of the will of God. We must individually hear Him speaking to the heart when every other voice is hushed and in the quietness we wait before Him. The silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God. He bids us be still and know that I am God. This is the effectual preparation for all labor for God. Amidst the hurrying throng and the strains of life's intense activities, he who is thus refreshed will be surrounded with an atmosphere of light and peace. He will receive a new endowment of physical, both physical and mental strength. His life will breathe out a fragrance and will reveal a divine power that will reach men's hearts. Unquote. Let's put those two together, shall we? I must, if I want to be a healthy workman for the Lord, a healthy instrument in His hands, I must take time to rest. And yes, I also must take time for that quiet communion with God in His Word and nature. I must have that time to be able to be refreshed and be solidified and balanced in my Christian experience. Dear fellow Minister of Reconciliation, I want to be a wise steward of God's gifts, particularly with this amazing body, what I have left of it, the most wonderful temple of the Lord. And I am encouraging you also to take the time to care for all three dimensions of your nature. All three are part of the temple of the Holy Ghost. Dear soldier of the cross, 
if you have been laboring incessantly for the Lord, I do hope and pray that you will take Christ's words to heart. Come ye yourselves apart and rest a while. Won't you take this counsel to heart along with me and determine by the grace of God to seek for a balanced three-dimensional walk as Christ's minister of reconciliation? Until next time, remember this. Jesus is coming soon for you and for me and for those that we've ministered to. Let's be the best we can for him, shall we? God bless you. Take courage.